Welcome everyone to another interview on Invisible Architecture. I'm Carol Assa, and I have a great guest today who's been with us a few times before and everyone really liked his uh, subject matters and his interviews. And this week he has a really intriguing topic. It's what what Tigo and Wendigo, mind viruses that plague our world. Well, Richard, what do you have to say about that? How did you get into this? Well, you know, I, I've been, I turned 70 this year, and I'm told that this is a harvest time for, you know, for mm -hmm. us. It's when humans can get to harvest the meanings from their life. And I've been doing a lot of uh, okay. uh, going back, visiting uh, past moments, also kind of retrieving stuff from my youth. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've been doing is re revisiting authors that fascinated me when I was in my early teens. One of them was Algernon Blackwood, and he wrote um, a novella called The Wendigo. And uh, it was a chilling story set in somewhere up in Canadian forests and a uh, very scary uh, story. And um, I came across um, an interview, uh, Bernard Gunter and um, Laura Matsu, they, they, they interviewed Paul Levy, who is a gentleman who's written, I think, three books about Wetiko. Wet, uh, wet, this is uh, Wetiko, Wendigo, and various other pronunciations and spellings of it. They are um, from indigenous American tribal lore, where they all recognize this phenomenon, this um, dark uh, spirit phenomenon, which, which has plagued communities, individuals and communities. And uh, what Paul Levy is really saying is that we are, the whole world is having a wetiko wet moment, um, has been certainly for the last few years, probably for quite a, quite a few years. It goes years. into how there, it's a mind virus, which is so interesting, right? Yes, a mind it's virus. A it's just like, yeah, epidemic. It is a virus. Yeah, I mean, I've, um, for a long time now, you know, I've been, when I used to be on social media, I've withdrawn really largely from that. But I used to talk about what I call the toxic dominant culture because, you know, to be adjusted to the world as it is now is to be ill. You know, we, <laughs> it's not a thing to be adjusted to. We need to adjust our culture rather than to adapt right. ourselves to the culture. And uh, one of the things that uh, when in our last uh, discussion, we were talking about projection. Huh? And um, I've had some experiences recently where I'm looking at uh, my own shadow projection and seeing how that plays out in relationships. Huh? And um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about projection to begin with, because I think this is where Wetiko has, it gets its claws into us. And oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, last time we were talking about, but we talked about uh, Freud and Jung, and we talked about Bernays and the impact that Bernays had on on um, culture, really. I mean, during the 20th century, the whole bringing of consumerism. And I just want to say something about projection as having two different meanings in the sense that we, let me just um, share a screen just to... Um, um, just to uh, highlight something here. If I go to my edit system here and share that. Um, it's interesting that uh, Hermann Hesse uh, said, um, if you hate a person, you hate something in him that is a part of yourself. What isn't part of ourselves doesn't disturb us. That's a good one. Yeah, now I think that's interesting because you know, one might think, well, you know, if there were people, if there was a, a small minority group of humans who really had the idea to depopulate the entire planet and enslave whoever was left, wouldn't we hate them? You know, would, wouldn't we hate such people? Mm -hmm. And I think, well, if, if a rabid dog comes down the road and you're in danger of being bitten, do you hate the dog? I mean, even if you have a firearm and you can actually shoot the dog and protect yourself and your family. Are you doing that out of hatred? I, I don't think so. I think there's a difference between hatred and uh, 
for example, the need to defend oneself from a, a threat which can occur in nature, a wild animal. Um, one doesn't necessarily hate a dangerous wild animal. One just recognizes the threat. Mm -hmm. And so I think hatred is, is a key to something. And wars are stirred up with hatred. Um, I'll just un unshare for a moment. Um, I, I, was, I was filming a conference at, uh, in, in the United Nations um, in the late 90s. It's actually UNIS. It was uh, for a week in the summer, I think every two years they invite children, young, young people in, in their teens and so on from all over the world, they'd invite them to come and have a conference uh, with this uh, organization that was to do with diplomats' children. And they had the subject of, um, of civil conflict. And there was a, a journalist there who gave a speech, which I really enjoyed, where he was talking about what happened in former Yugoslavia leading up to the civil war there. And he was talking about how the radio would just be saying every day, you know, they hate us, they hate us, you know, they, they, they hate us. And so if you keep being told that your neighbours hate you, right. you know, then you begin to hate them. You don't even know who they are. They're not actual people to you. They're just those people over there and you hate them because they hate you. And so right. the whole civil conflict gets stirs up, stirred up mm -hmm. in this way. And we've seen similar things going on in the last three years over should one be wearing a mask or, you know, should one be taking medi medicines that one doesn't necessarily trust and which side people are on that argument? Vaccinated it's, it's or up. unvaccinated. It was yeah. such a, a, a division, a dialectic, you know, a binary, this or that. Absolutely. It's so, made like that. And it hasn't, like, changed yet. No. And I think this is, this is Wetiko. This is Wendigo because... When we anticipate, when we imagine that the other person, the person on the other side of the argument is against us and is like this and is like that, and if we said this to them, they would say that, we anticipate an argument and so on. And uh, I was in a situation not very long ago where there was, a, there was an argument coming, possibly, over something. And... It's someone that I normally get on okay with, but this particular subject was very um, e emotive. And uh, I woke up at you know four o'clock in the morning anticipating a conversation and I was in a real state. And I thought, what am I gonna do about this? Now, I don't sort of fall in with the, the general Meridian tapping community, but I did learn through my involvement in Chinese martial arts and so on, yeah, that tapping works. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a whole subject, you know, that's, about the energy but it bodies. Does really work. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So if you're having a problem, especially if you're having an emotional problem, that if you can turn your energy bodies to address the problem, you can get your head, heart, and belly aligned, mm -hmm. and 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 get and and get uh, sovereign over your thoughts and feelings, and then and then you can deal with things in a balanced way. You can get your tai chi. You can get your your yin yang balance. Um, and so I had to do that. And um, I started doing this tapping and I was trying to get myself sorted to deal with the individual I was going to speak with. And I found myself affirming that I wanted that person to forgive me. And I, part of me was outraged. I mean, why should I feel, you know, why do I need to be forgiven? You know, it's the other person who's done the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the, it's got the wrong yeah. end of the argument. <laughs> yeah, but I found myself thinking this, so I kept tapping, and you know, and I settled down. My energy settled, and I thought, "Gosh, you know, that's that's amazing." You know, I've just tapped my energy, my my energy bodies, and suddenly I'm seeing things from the other side. Mm -hmm. And then later on, we had a conversation, and it was wonderful. We had such a harmonious interaction and I thought, what was all that about? Why was I so bothered that this was going to be a terrible mm -hmm. argument, mm -hmm. you know? And so it made me think about the whole phenomenon that Paul Levy writes about, mm -hmm. that this mind virus gets in there and gets us projecting the shadow onto the other. Mm -hmm. And... Um, 
and it gets in both sides it's a kind of a non-local thing so it's in it's in me it's also in the other individual and it needs one of us to break to break free from it and so i found that the energy work um enabled me to come out of it and the other person simultaneously came out of it as well I mean, that's so amazing because he was talking also about how it just replicates itself. So like by doing that, you kind of resolve that so it, it doesn't go move on further. Do you yes. know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. It just like uh, it just doesn't end. It just can, it has, a, it feeds on you. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a, a, yin, -yang, a yin yang imbalance. I mean, all conflict. All, the most terrible conflict that which we consider to be absolutely evil all arises from yin yang imbalance mm -hmm. and so wherever one is whatever one is facing if one can get the yin yang balance or get the tai chi the, the, the yin yang symbol if one can get that balance then one has the best chance to navigate that situation and that's mm -hmm. so yeah for me i'm i'm dot joining I mean, I'm not a professional thinker, you know, I, I can talk about things like the imaginal and so on, but I'm not a philosopher. I don't write papers. I try to read papers about these things. Yeah, and you have that. It's innate in you. You really, you, you um, embody all the things you talk about. I mean, I think that's really amazing. I, I the very to... first interview we had with the elements, how you mm -hmm. can embody and feel where they are, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah, I think... I've recently had to forgive Descartes, you know. René <laughs> <laughs> Descartes, he says, I think, therefore I am. And I thought, what a damn stupid thing, you know, and, you, and everyone's quoting him as if he's clever, you know, that I think, uh -huh. therefore I am. I think it's more like I am, and also I can think. Uh -huh. And I just had him totally upside down. It was only really, relatively recently that I realized the, what he was saying was, I know that most of my thinking is so garbled well, at the very least, I can say from all of that that I am. That's the, the, the kind of basic conclusion I can draw from all of this, uh, you know, monkey mind stuff. I mean, I think he, he was better than I thought, you know. So I had to take back my projection onto him. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, so much goes on in the, on the mental plane, which is completely disconnected from everything else. Mm -hmm. And one cannot trust the mind in that way. One has to use the mind. We have to use our intellect. It's uh, it's innate and we have it, but we cannot trust it on its own. Mm -hmm. So for me, I realize, I realize that I need to connect uh, head, heart and belly to be able to get to any kind of real understanding. As long as it's purely abstract, the chances are I could be off somewhere. So... The I've tried to filter everything that, through the body. This wisdom school that I've been in 20, 30 years, you know, like it, there, there's a, a saying that's so great. I think it's like to think with the heart and to feel with the mind. And that's such a great way of, of, of putting them together. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause in, you know, in the, in the Taoist science, you have three Dantians. Right. I just call it head, heart and belly. And okay. to get them working together, mm -hmm. you know, you have your gut feeling, your heart um, understanding, your empathy, your capacity for reaching into and feeling another person rather than just thinking about them. And then we've got this deductive reasoning, you know, and you've got sort of our Sherlock Holmes. Well, even Sherlock Holmes had a lot of intuition mm -hmm. triggering his deductive reasoning, you know, mm -hmm. um, the character. And so, yeah, so it, you know, so I realized that. Um, when we get strong emotions toward another, mm -hmm. that there is some projection involved. And projection, you know, there's the projection of the shadow, also projection of ideals. And then there's also on the other side of the use of the word projection is what we project of ourselves, our persona. That's mm -hmm. also a form of projection, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about how Bernays, Bernays was encouraging well consumerism he's stirring stirring up this madness mm -hmm. and uh, you had this uh, i don't know if we played the clip of the woman who was saying you know you should in in express your individuality through buying these clothes you know these these wonderful clothes are going to make you better than that 
silly person over there who you can then project that they're an inferior individual because they wear drab clothes and where you're wearing bright lovely clothes i mean it's <laughs> you know that's projection in both directions isn't it it is yeah no he was an amazing what the influence he had on on america and and then it worldwide you know just yeah it was this whole i am culture it's me 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 yeah and that brings up i mean two other things which uh, come to my mind one is um I'm, I'm having a di argument sometimes certain people I have ongoing arguments with and the word ego comes up and uh, you know it's like there are people telling me that the ego has to be got rid of altogether and I'm saying well I'm not going to cross a busy street without mine intact thank you very much uh -huh. ego sum mm -hmm. is uh, I am in Latin isn't it ego mm -hmm. sum I am right. we need an I am but if it gets inflated then it's a problem if it can't take a back seat sometimes it's a problem but we need it and so um there's that fundamental difference between the Taoist approach to um well what should we call it liberation and the, the buddhist one i was reading the secret of the golden flower i love, and, that. Uh, hmm? I love that book it's a wonderful book isn't it and he's making the observation that uh, the the concept of immortality in Taoism is quite different from the, the Buddhist idea mm -hmm. of complete uh, dissolution of ego. Right. Because they're saying that, you know, to have this concept of, 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 the, of the, the divine soul having continuity, or what I call continuity of assembled awareness beyond the death of the physical, mm -hmm. there is an ego in there. Otherwise, how would you how would you maintain assembled awareness if you don't have an I am? Right. Mm -hmm. So there is a, there is a pure um, and and correct form of ego, ego, mm -hmm. which which is which is yeah, it's That's it's one it's of those essential. Books that you know you can read every five years or so, and and just so much comes out each time, different. Yeah. 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 So I. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I've been thinking about this uh, Wetiko as it is functioning in the world. I, I mean, I would really recommend anyone who's who's listening to us and finds this interesting, read Paul Levy's book in his his book, which was just published this year, um, Undreaming Wetiko, is really brilliant. It's a big book. I mean, it's long. You know, it's, it's there's a lot in there, and. Um, he, he makes some very, very interesting observations, for example, about Jung, Jung's analytical psychology and the relationship between the analyst and the analysand and how a successful um, therapy works. Mm -hmm. Is that what, what happens is that, so let's take a, 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 a female, um, because I've got someone in my mind, you know, we take a female analysand going to a male uh, an analyst okay. and has a father issue mm -hmm. and so what happens is she does the transference where she starts to perceive the the anal the analyst as the father she projects the father onto him and then what happens is you get the counter transference where the man in this position takes on the projection and then starts to see the analysand as if she was his daughter mm -hmm. and of course that can be a problem <laughs> that can counter transference unless it's managed very very wisely by the analyst mm -hmm. uh, very dangerous mm -hmm. and this has happens a lot because not many psychologists are up to the task but if the an analyst does it right mm -hmm. through the counter transference he feels where the actual father figure that was the source of her trauma went wrong and heals that in himself when he does that she then heals herself in resonance because she can because she has the opportunity and this is what the shaman always did oh, that's, from time that's... immemorial yeah. the shaman had to do the work the shaman can't heal you but the shaman if they journey well and if they if they dream the dream that takes them back to where your problem started, they can do that work themselves 
and give you the chance to heal yourself. It's a resonance. So you go in that resonance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen I've seen a, a Kurandar of a, a, a Shipibo shaman doing an amazing thing with someone who ha was in in a ceremony, uh, uh, ayahuasca ceremony, a, a, a woman who was having something terrible come coming out of her that needed to be dealt with, and he went and sucked it out of her and then he vomited and uh, he 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 cleansed he, he you know he he took that on himself and fully cleansed that and i, I observed this happening and it's you know that shamanic practice is it, it requires great integrity and compassion and uh it it has to be someone of, of real caliber themselves to be able to provide that service just to be able to see, to know. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, not not that many. That's why there's not that many real shamans. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I want to screen share again. It's just because I think the image is quite nice. I'm having this uh, discussion with this particular individual. And um, there's a lot of projection going on. I'm trying to keep myself clear. And um, I... Uh, I'm trying not to be argumentative or accusatory. Um, let me see if uh, share screen. Here we are in in the discussion with this individual, and I was out walking and thinking about um, what's on my mind. And uh, near where I live, where I t where I walk the dogs up the hill, there's this old ob observatory. Oh no, that's um, that's the next one. I want to go back. Um, that is an observatory um, from Prussian or German times, because this part of Poland was under was was part of Prussia, but Germany for two, three hundred years, and it's there and it's actually being used, which is great. Um, you can open it up and look at the. Yeah, yeah I, I I can't get in there. There's a professor I think from the city who comes out with students, but I haven't been able to get access. But I go, I walk past it with the dogs because it's um, it's oh. rather nice to see. And I was there on a sunny morning, about six thirty in the morning, and I was thinking, this is a symbol of observation, you know. And then we have um, that. <laughs> That's my shadow, <laughs> and. You know, what is the relationship between observation and shadow? You know, uh, to be able to observe clearly, you need to get, you, you don't want a lot of fog and cloud in the way. Right. And the, the stirred up emotions uh, of hatred and so on, they just, they fog, they, 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 they cloud our ability to see. Mm -hmm. And um, to be a seer, one has to be able to see through the clouds one has to be able to take back one's own shadow projections and i think also one's own ideal projections mm -hmm. um which was something that i didn't get onto in our last discussion which is where i feel that we humans have such incredible capacity and potential which has been somehow shut down somewhere in our history it's been limited and reduced and that we need to recover it by taking back the ideal projections as well as the shadow ones mm -hmm. so for example i thinking of herman hesse when i was um, in my late teens i read a book by him and i i i was so i felt so passionately involved in that story and i so idealized certain characters Mm -hmm. And uh, I've come to realize over the years that this was, I was projecting my own potential into a character in a book. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, doesn't religion do that? You know, I mean, religions hold up people who have accomplished levels of awareness mm -hmm. and transformation. And we, you know, that we can start praying to them, mm -hmm. you know, praying to an idealized human rather than recognizing that that image is an image of something that we need to retrieve just as much as we need to retrieve the dark side mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. so yeah and uh you know fundamentalism which also stirs up 
division and conflict right. is very much hooked on to the projection of an ideal onto a historical character um, instead of recognizing that within oneself is that potential mm -hmm. and that uh, it, the thing to do is to seek that potential in oneself rather than to always put it up there in an inaccessible place and then say, oh, we've got to pray well, to that person. Like the, the difference between the philosophers of nature and then the people of the texts. Yes. Know, Christians, the Jews, the Muslims. It, they, it's to the text, not to the nature. I think, and that a lot, I think, brings like what you were talking about this problem. Yeah. Yes. Different. Yeah. Like how and, uh, everybody looked at it was so different. Yeah. And I was also thinking about um, uh, the accuser and uh, um, Mara in the in the Gautama Buddha mythos and uh, Satan in, in, in the Jesus story, you know, mm -hmm. that you have this this being, if you like, that accuses you and which is your self accusation and um in 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 uh, when the buddha when when the gotama is sitting under the body tree meditating mara with all his legion of demons comes and says basically i oh, you're full of shit you know you left your family and went off and searched for yourself i mean you're just a selfish guy you're not really you know you don't really i mean i'm much more enlightened and advanced than you are you know mm -hmm. and uh you can see that kind of self-dialogue going on. And what happens is that uh, he, the, Gautama puts, touches the earth with the middle finger of his right hand and says, um, earth bears witness to me. And then earth or mother earth or mm -hmm. the materium roars and Mara and his legion of demons just run off because mm -hmm. they can't deal with that. And I think that's there's something in that story about where we have to get to to be able to take back our shadow and also take back our ide ideals and own them and come out of that self-conflicted state. Um, you know, Jesus, um, 40, 40 days and nights in the wilderness and then Satan comes and offers him everything and he says no get behind me satan mm -hmm. um because he's at that point of lucidity where he knows that that's meaningless and uh, he is able to resolve that yin yang conflict and that's yeah I think they're, they're very similar stories with the media you know it's just continually because with the phones it's just continually programming and like this, like before they could at least not have that. You know what I mean? You could be more reflective and more, but it doesn't allow that. That's right. It's, it's very, very reinforcing, reinforcing, you know. Everything is one sided. There is no room for discussion. There's no room for debate. And um, it's very one sided. It's all pointed in one direction. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think it's becoming increasingly clear to many people what that direction is. And as things come out about 9-11 and so on, we start to see more and more how the powers that ought not to be have been up to their tricks for a very long time, probably much, much longer than we realize. Right. And these problems are generational because um, if one is born into a family that have world domination on their mind and they're playing a long game mm -hmm. um how do those you know probably not many of those individuals who are born into that manage to think their way out of it some of them do mm -hmm. but um these are ancestral patterns that are carrying through bloodlines and then the conflicts that are stirred up between ethnicities and nationalities are perpetuated mm -hmm. By, by those people's manipulations but this is all wetiko i mean it's all wetiko working through those channels mm -hmm. and uh, that, i think that's what uh, paul levy is very tuned okay. into 
one of these things he was talking about that with Tico's not creative and wants to come on and use your creativity. I thought that was yeah. an interesting thing too. That's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Creativity. I feel that um, in the in in the universe there is there is a force which is destructive and there's a force which is generative and creative. Uh -huh. And they do have to have a degree of balance. I mean, things have to go for new things to come, for there to be novelty, old things have to break down. But when we human beings fall into some kind of identification with the death force, with the destructive force, mm -hmm. that is for us, that, that is where that is evil, isn't it? That's how evil manifests. Right. That somehow some people fall in. And when people say, well, you know, there are too many people on the planet, and you know, mm -hmm. so that justifies depopulation. That is mass murder. Right. You know, that is mass murder. I mean, do, do we accept that? Mm -hmm. But then should we then hate those people who do that? No, it's not a solution to hate them. Right. <laughs> it doesn't look, it's not going to work. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is, I mean, I'm just meandering around here talking about oh, no, it. But it goes right back to the whole thing with the dot, you know, I mean, that whole, yeah. Yeah. So we, we, I was, um, I've been having a lot of problems with um, very, very disturbed dreams. And uh, I've been thinking, well, during the day, my contemplation is generally bringing me to a fairly unified sense of what's going on. And, 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 and I'm doing my best to resolve my own inner mm -hmm. conflicted states. Um, um, but in my night dreams, I'm diving into a world of anxiety and I'm thinking, where do all these things come from? Are they all mine? Mm -hmm. And then I think, well, we are all connected in the web of life. Mm -hmm. And so perhaps when we're dreaming, we dive into the collective unconscious and we tune into and experience what the world, what the human world is going through. Mm -hmm. So no matter how we may meditate and, and, and settle ourselves down during the day while we're in our conscious state, what happens when we go into the unconscious mm -hmm. unless we can become fully lucid we're subject to that that war which is going on if you like on the astral plane or in the in mm -hmm. the collective unconscious mm -hmm. and um that is it made me think about uh, robert wagner who wrote uh, wonderful books about lucid dreaming and he I had a man. did you yeah. oh I missed that i'll have to go look he's great Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, there, there was this story he told um, in the middle of one of his books where he said that he was having a chat with his dad mm -hmm. and he suddenly realized that his dad had been dead for five years. Right. So he became lucid. I mean, he regularly becomes lucid, so it's no big deal that he becomes lucid. But then in the morning, he's writing his dream journal and he thinks, oh, there I was talking to my dad and I didn't ask what was for him a burning question that that opportunity presented and that is about degrees of lucidity i mean i don't know how long several years ago 10 or more 12 years ago i was reading eckhart tolle about the power of now of course one has to be present one has to be able to occupy the present moment mm -hmm. and not be constantly pulled into future past whatever but one also has to have a sense of one's trajectory right. and so in, if your trajectory involves solving a problem which you could have help from your parent who's passed on, mm -hmm. then that would be a greater degree of lucidity. You know, you're present, you realize, oh, I'm, I'm dreaming, here he is, now I can ask him that question. And that's what, that's in our waking life, if we can become lucid mm -hmm. in our waking life, then we have that possibility to have us to be present while at the same time having a sense of where we come from and where it, our intent is headed. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that in Poland, in Polish language, they don't differentiate between intent and intention. And I think this is a very valuable distinction we have in the English language mm -hmm. because intention is like, oh, I'm going to give up smoking, you know. <laughs> it may or may not happen. Right. But intent is a force of nature, isn't it? You know, 
if someone if there's an opportunist criminal maybe they need a, a, a fix of heroin or something and they see an opportunity they're going to go and steal that whatever it is or come and whack you over the head for your wallet mm -hmm. it's not an intention oh maybe i'll do this you know next week right. it's, it's the force of nature and intent the word intent carries that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the species has the intent to procreate you know the the species has the intent to continue the individual ego um with this spiritual um and light a, a, a spiritual um purpose has an intent to maintain and develop assembled awareness mm -hmm. and that intent is a force it's almost like a, a singularity pulling you you know that right. you you tune into and 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 that draws you forward and without that we've, we're falling apart you know it's, it's the thing which enables us to pull ourselves together and it requires the retrieval of our trauma the energy that has been lost in our traumas the energy energy that's been lost in part of castaneda's assembly point yes yes he yeah yeah he i mean he you know he was a he was an amazing storyteller mm -hmm. and i was very drawn into his stories and then i started to wonder what is this you know i started to doubt him and then i got involved in a lot of casting and groups on facebook and i started to see so much pretense and posing and nonsense wow. and <laughs> and then you know if you if you say anything to someone that they disagree with they then tell you that uh, you should you know stop your internal dialogue and be silent because they don't want to hear what you have to say <laughs> so, perfect little um, Latigo. <laughs> yeah yeah so i came to feel that he is you know that he's he's don juan character is a hybrid character drawn from probably wise people that he did meet and learn from and also gurdjieff and various other influences that he had and that he made a story out of his own learning which is fine but then he did turn it into a cult and the people who got really close to him got quite messed up i think so there was definitely a problem with that but he did touch on some interesting stuff and um yeah. the assemblage point i tried to find references to it elsewhere mm -hmm. there was some kind of reference to it in grs mead it, 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 grs mead wrote a book which sort of hints at that Mm -hmm. uh, at the assemblage point but i mean the idea of assembled awareness is very clear isn't it mm -hmm. yes, that, that we uh, when our when our awareness is assembled right that's what gives us our worldview and um or how it is assembled is what gives us our worldview and uh, because you i you've read uh, a lot of levy uh, stuff so on his dreaming is he go into like um to correct, to to address the Wichigo and all of this, you know, within the dreams, because he talks about that we're living in these daydreams and doing this. Does he go into, like, how does he go into accessing that? I think, I think it's, you know, it's a long book and it's a long story. And I think it's, it's, you, you get the hint of how to do it, but there's no, uh oh, one wow. two three it's okay. something that you, you 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 know he has this acronym that he made up which is um p c d p c d premature comprehension delusion <laughs> he says i start talking to people about watiko and they say after a few seconds you know they say oh yeah yeah i know that so no you don't you know i've been studying this for 20 years you right. don't understand it it's much more subtle much more profound than something you could just oh yeah so i think how one deals with it is also it's it's a very subtle thing and probably it's as it's a totally individual job how one deals with it one one has to deal with it through one's own individual uh apparatus which is one's whole background and self-knowledge and so on but um there was something that came to mind um oh it, it came and went it was a, there was a there was a, a very good hint in one of the stories that he told and i thought yes that's that's it but I, i'll have to i'll have to come back to it S okay. slipped away mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, i just wondered how he like dealt with that like 
because you really have to um, address that you have this and it and and it's it's the group life has it too it's just not you you know that's it that's it yes it's in the title undreaming wetiko okay now this is um i i spent um a couple of days in a workshop with um, Sergio Magana, who I like very much, hmm. who is a Mexican man with a Toltec lineage, I think an authentic Toltec lineage. And um, I went to study the Obsidian Mirror with him. I went to Budapest and um, had a very nice couple of days studying with him. And he was talking about, um, oh, he talks a lot about dreaming and about waking dreaming. And when you gaze into the, the black mirror, you're dreaming awake. And then they have in his tradition that he's that he's tapped into, they have what's called dream planting, where you you because they say that the world that we live in is a, a, a materialization or an accretion of our dreaming that we first dream it mm -hmm. first, it's dreamed and then it materializes. And so a lot of the bad news in the world is stuff that we've dreamed up. We've dreamed it up. And so the idea of undreaming, in order to undream Waitiko, you have to recognize it. And you can only recognize it in your own thought feeling patterns. That's mm -hmm. the only place you can't recognize it without going within, without seeing how it works in your own interactions, in your own relationships, or in inter- ethnic ethnicities or nation, nationalities we have to see those conflicts and see what's going on inside them and then undream that because we are all dreaming all the time mm -hmm. we are we are all dreaming and that's 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 what's really happening that's our perception of what is what they call reality or i call what's actual is we're dreaming it. Oh, yeah. I just, I, I do want to share something. Uh, Spensky, when you're talking about that, you know, the dream state, how he was so into that. And, you know, Spensky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, Gurdjieff was Spensky, and, and, and right. yeah, I mean, he Talk was very. Yeah. Dream state all the time, yeah. I, I just, there was something that um, when I went back to, back to school in my 30s, and I did a, um, a degree in communications and a lot of what was what we were studying was um, linguistics and um, I had a very good linguistics teacher I really liked him very much and um, one day at the beginning of one of the courses um, he let me just sorry, he put on the whiteboard can can you see that uh -huh. have you seen my chocolates mm -hmm. right he just wrote it up on the whiteboard and then over on the other end of the whiteboard, he wrote this. Okay. The children were in here earlier. So he just looks around at us. He says, so, so what's going on? And we've all got children eating chocolates, right? Mm -hmm. Where is it written? It's not there, is it? It's not written. <laughs> It's, no one wrote it. He said these two utterances could have been taken from completely different contexts. But as soon as we put them next to each other, mm -hmm. we start seeing children eating chocolates. This is that we do the work of inference. We can't help it. We seek a context in which to make sense. Mm -hmm. So when we see these two utterances, where have you seen my children? The children here earlier. Well, the children must have eaten them. Mm -hmm. We supply that explanation where it doesn't necessarily fit at all. Okay. And we do that all the time. We're constantly making inference. Mm -hmm. We're taking personally things that are nothing to do with us. We are constantly, you know, making these mistakes because we try to create a context in which things make sense. And if we've had traumatic experiences early in life, that can flavor our perception of everything. I mean, I, I, for some reason, I grew up with a, a prejudice against French people, and I had to become conscious of it. Good heavens, you know, why, why do I think that about French people? That's ridiculous. And then I was reading sort of uh, back in the Napoleonic Wars times, you know, the, 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 the kind of um, stuff that they used to put out into the public to recruit 
people to go and fight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, British have been busy projecting their shadow onto the French for quite a long time, you know. Uh -huh. uh, it's still completely insane. But so, yeah, we, we do the work of inference. We seek relevance and we make it by, with whatever we've got. And so we need to know ourselves very, very well to take back our negative projections and our positive projections right. and to become more complete. Mm -hmm. Well, this next uh, year and a half, like in the United States with the elections and stuff, there's going to be uh, a lot of time to do the work. <laughs> I believe so. You know, and like just like really look at where you're coming from on all of this. And I think also to, I think a lot of things are going to come out. Mm -hmm. it, it seems that a lot's coming out about 9-11, which was not acknowledged right. by most people. You know, I spoke to people who, who lived in New York who had never even known that a third tower fell that wasn't struck by anything. We don't know what any tower was struck by, but certainly t but WTC7 was not hit by anything. And steel skyscrapers of the type that were built there cannot fall as a consequence of furniture fires. This can't happen. It's You're watching the, the British reporter in front of it saying it had fallen <laughs> and it was still there. I mean, that was a little clue. <laughs> absolutely. It just shows you what the BBC is, you know, <laughs> absolutely. You know, uh, what, what came out today or yesterday was about the Wuhan leak. And uh, the the whistleblower with the CIA that was uh, has accused these. It's really like coming, like you're saying, it's slipping out. Everything is coming out, and I I'm inclined to believe that there are a bunch of people working on that. You know, I mean, making sure that all of that comes out mm -hmm. um, before uh, the American voters um, get to go back to the polling booths and um maybe if they have paper ballots and get rid of all the electronics yeah you might yeah. see a, a more uh, a, a more representative outcome um yeah yeah it's really it, it's a hell of a thing isn't it and uh, so when you're in poland is it like really different than when you see like the whole political thing compared to like in the states where we have like two years like for the next you know everybody's in like mm. another well, there's a, there's very strong division here in poland definitely and they're very passionate you know there's very strong feelings on 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 both sides mm -hmm. um and um that division i think is everywhere um but they don't run their elections for such a long time do they no 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 they I mean, don't I think that's just ridiculous like it's well it's 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 shenanigans isn't it i did i saw very very funny need more media you know yeah i saw a very funny thing a video from niger yesterday um there there were these guys and military guys and they were they were opening up things that had been brought to the french embassy you know that niger's uh they, they've they've kicked out their corrupt government exactly. and they they want the french diplomats to go US back troops there yeah yeah they, they want the french to go home right. they don't trust and they're fed up with french colonialism and they they're confiscating food that's being delivered to the to the uh, french embassy and they've they've confiscated this massive horde of croissants <laughs> croissants that were being smuggled in to the embassy and they've confiscated them and one of the comments under this instagram post was uh, you know the diplomats will surrender because they cannot live without their croissant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. But it's it everywhere. It's the whole it world. <laughs> the whole world is 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 in this state of tension of and, and, and yeah. tension and fear. Yeah. So. And then what's happening? What's been happening in 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 uh, Maui? That's. It's terrible. Uh, it's really awful. And so much evidence is surfacing about that. I don't think they ever thought that that surface, that that mm -hmm. material would be getting out to the public as it is. So we are living yes, in interesting times. I think the solidarity 
they underestimated the solidarity of the inhabitants of Maui. Yes, yes, and 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 the and the the, the social media that are not being that, that are not being censored are the alternative is really like on it. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so we are living. An hour. I missed that. What did you say? Oh, it's been an hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, we're all going to have oh, thank a fatigue with all of these elections and the world yeah. order, right? It really is. I think to, to understand Wichiko at this time would be very, very helpful for lucidity because it would go with being lucid in one's waking life, one's waking dream mm -hmm. to uh, make good decisions and to navigate all the lies and deception. I yeah. like that thing about the, uh, when you were, how you say it, scrying or scry scrying with the black? Yeah, scrying, the, yeah. That, that you're projecting, say that again, what did you say, that you're projecting your dreams on it? What did he say? Well, he said, he said that um, when you are scrying, you are dreaming awake. And he actually, when he was in dreaming Italy. Awake. I like that, yeah. When, when he was in Italy, um, he was, um, they con connected him up to an electroencephalogram. And uh, while he was, you know, he's wide awake and he's talking about what he's seeing. Um, but his brain waves are those of someone in in the rapid uh, REM REM sleep. Oh, okay. So dreaming away. He, yeah, but he had mastered it. Mm -hmm. He has. Yeah, he's he's got he's he's well on his way. And what I love about him is he doesn't claim to be a master of everything. I asked him a question. He said, well, "I don't know the answer to that yet. I haven't finished." Mm -hmm. uh, I really respect that. You know. It's in the process. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hey, well, this was another one. They go so fast. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Richard. So this was good. And everybody could start thinking about their Wetiko. And that book was called, uh, what's that? Undreaming Wetiko. Undreaming Wetiko. Yeah. By yeah. Paul Levy. Paul Levy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thank, thank you very much for letting me ramble on. <laughs> so this is a lot. I mean, this is, it's so we are in a you know there is a mind virus yes. worldwide plague so okay thank you thank you let me see where uh... wait it disappeared the to stop the recording oh Oh, well, I'll just hit. Okay. Well, it says stop video here. Shall I click stop video? Is no, that okay? Just, um, oh, gonna, no, no, that, no, that's just the video feed. I ended the end meeting. It used to have like the record where they where I should keep it to. I hope it. Oh, it says recording in the top left hand corner. So it is recording. Still.